In our gospel lesson this morning, we see Jesus predict his death for the first time to his disciples. He tells his disciples he will go to Jerusalem and explains what will happen there. He will suffer, he will be killed, and he will rise on the third day. And what does Peter say? Heaven forbid, Lord, this will ever happen to you. If you remember from last week in Pastor Week's, Pastor Luke's sermon, it was Peter who recognized Jesus for what he truly was and who he was, the Messiah. But now he kind of takes a step back and wants to protect Jesus from suffering that he's prophesying about. But we know that if Jesus does not suffer and die, Peter, as well as every one of us for the ma that matter, would have or will die in our sins. Great temptations can come in this life for those who love, who love us and seek to protect us. We need to be cautious if we hear a friend or a family member say to us, surely God doesn't want you to face this. Often our most difficult temptations come from those who are only trying to protect us from discomfort. Earlier in the Gospel of Matthew, we hear the account of Jesus as he is tempted out in the wilderness by Satan. During these temptations, Jesus hears the message that he can achieve greatness without dying, and now he hears the same from Peter, which is why Jesus quickly addresses him and a bit sternly. Get away from me, Satan. You are a dangerous trap to me. After just recognizing Jesus as the Messiah, Peter this morning forsakes God's perspective and evaluates the situation at hand from a human perspective only. Friends, Satan is always wanting us to leave God out of the picture. Several years ago, I read a story written by a preacher in the Philippine Islands. One day, as he passed along a large church on Good Friday, he spotted many people selling incense, candles, veils, and rosaries. And he also saw several small boys who were running about the streets selling crosses. He heard their little voices calling out, crosses, cheap crosses for sale buy a cheap cross. Much like those cheap crosses for sale, I think that too often that's what we find ourselves looking for, a cheap cross, or perhaps to put it another way, a faith that might be easy, a faith that is light and all sweetness and makes no demands on our time, our money, or our service. Jesus addresses the disciples. If any of you wants to be my follower, you must put away your selfish ambition, shoulder your cross, and follow me. When Jesus paints this picture for his disciples, they know exactly what he means. For the Romans, crucifixion was a common method of execution. And criminals that were condemned had to carry their cross through the street to their execution site. Following Jesus, therefore, meant a true commitment, the risk of death, and no turning back. The possibility of Jesus or his disciples losing their life was real. The cross of Christ was not cheap at all. In fact, Jesus gave up his throne in glory to come and live in this world of sin and give his life on the cross to free us from our sins. So it's our responsibility that we aren't looking to buy a cheap cross for sale or even wishing for a faith that is easy. Friends, real discipleship implies real commitment in this life, it should be realized that we are to pledge our entire existence to God's service. 
If we are moving throughout our life trying to save our physical lives from pain, death, or discomfort, we indeed risk losing eternal life. In fact, Elaine and I just had this conversation on the way to her karate class this past week. We were talking about eternal life in heaven with God as we commented on some beautiful clouds as the sun set with rays coming out of them. I taught Ian, I think, early on that I always feel like when I see that, I think of people going up to heaven to be with God, that heaven is gaining another angel. So Elaine and I continued our talk, and I said, isn't it awesome that no matter how, we, how long we live on earth or what age it is that we die, we get to live forever with God in eternity? I explained to her that as Christians, that is our hope and how that hope and realization can help us when things here on earth aren't so easy, or perhaps when things don't happen the way that we would want them to, or they don't turn out just as we expect. We continue to discuss how life has been different for us all in the recent months. And I said to her in closing, imagine if we thought that this was it. This life is all we had and that when we die, it's the end. We talked about how we would approach things on earth differently if we truly believed that this was it. Friends, if we try to protect ourselves from the pain God calls us to suffer, we will begin to die both spiritually as well as emotionally. Each of our lives will begin to turn inward and we will lose what our intended purpose is. However, on the other hand, when we give our lives in service to Christ, that is when we will discover the real purpose in living. When we don't know Christ and the difference that he makes, we will make choices as if there were no afterlife. But in reality, as Christians, we have to remember that this life is just an introduction to eternity. Even the highest social or civic honors cannot earn us entrance into heaven. So maybe now is a good time to evaluate our lifestyles from an eternal perspective. And guess what? I bet if we do that, each one of us might find some of our decisions or our values changing. So what does it exactly mean for us today to take up our cross and follow Jesus. Maybe you have heard the phrase or used the phrase, we all have our cross to bear. That phrase insinuates acceptance of a burdensome task, but the command from Jesus to take up your cross is much more than a symbol for those difficulties that we have to face. In fact, whether or not we are a Christian, it will not exclude us from frustrations or pains in this life. Taking up one's cross and following Jesus is something totally different. Jesus is referring to our total commitment to him, commitment even unto death. Even if obedience is humiliating or painful, we should be willing to endure it for Christ. Friends, Jesus is telling you and telling me that we must experience death to self. As he says to Peter and he says to each one of us, if you try to keep your life for yourself, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find true life. I think it's pretty clear nothing in this life is worth keeping if it means losing eternal life not our job, not our family or group of friends, and not even our very identity. The multitudes of crowds that followed Jesus while he was serving his ministry on earth didn't always grasp Jesus' true purpose because they had those preconceived thoughts about what the Messiah would be. Many were convinced that it would be Jesus who would bring about that glorious kingdom on earth, freeing them from the Romans' oppressive rule. 
In fact, even his own disciples thought that from time to time. So many left Jesus just as fast as they followed him. They left him in droves as he began to speak of that concept of death to self in carrying their cross. I think believers today sometimes to continue to misunderstand that the call of Jesus is not a call to wealth, health, or prosperity, but that is far from the reality of what it means for us to be a disciple of Christ. Jesus does not guarantee us a pleasant life, but in fact, he does promise that promise us that trouble, troubles will come to us as believers. But with that promise, he also promises to be present with us and to give us the joy and the peace of the Holy Spirit, as well as comfort us when those times of trouble come to us. To take up our cross and follow Christ means commitment to the point of giving up our hopes, our dreams, our possessions, and even our very life, if need be. This is the only acceptable attitude of a true disciple. For some Christians throughout the world, even today, they do face death for their belief in Christ. Where for others of us, that death may be felt a bit more emotionally rather than physically. But I think it is important for us to think about the following questions. Would you still follow Jesus if it meant losing your closest friends? Would you still follow Jesus if it meant alienation from your family? Would you still follow Jesus if it meant the loss of your reputation? Would you still follow Jesus if it meant losing your job? And finally, would you still follow Jesus if it meant losing your life? I agree that these are no small questions, but they are important for us to think about and to answer honestly to see where we find ourselves in our life of faith. Are we looking for a cheap cross for sale, an easy faith? Or are we willing to go all in as a committed disciple of Jesus Christ and take up our cross? I don't know about you, but I think now more than ever, our communities, our country, our world, are in need of the message of Jesus Christ. A reminder that this life isn't it, that we have eternity in heaven to look forward to. But that also doesn't mean that for now we are to sit back and do nothing. It means that as Christians, both individually as well as corporately, we have personal responsibility to live as a redeemed people in a very fallen world. Friends, we are to give ourselves to Christ as living sacrifices. We are to obey the government, love our neighbors, and take special care of those who find themselves weak in the faith. But how are we to be a living sacrifice? By daily laying aside our own desires to follow God by putting all of our energy and resources at God's disposal and trusting God will guide us. In Romans chapter 12, Paul gives the Christians in Rome some pretty good advice for living as a redeemed people in a fallen world. And friends, I am not sure about you, but now more than ever, I truly feel like a redeemed person living in a fallen world. So I want to close this sermon this morning with Paul's advice, which is just as pertinent to to us this day in 2020 as it was in A.D. 57. So this comes from Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 21. Don't just pretend that you love others. Really love them. 
Hate what is wrong. Stand on the side of good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy in your work, but serve the Lord enthusiastically. Be glad for all God is planning for you. Be patient in trouble and always be prayerful. When God's children are in need, be the one to help them out and get into the habit of inviting guests home for dinner or if they need lodging for the night. If people persecute you because you are a Christian, don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. When others are happy, be happy with them. If they are sad, share their sorrow. Live in harmony with each other. Don't try to act important, but enjoy the company of ordinary people. And don't think that you know it all. Never pay back evil for evil to anyone. Do, do things in such a way that everyone can see you as honorable. Do your part to live in peace with everyone as much as it is possible. Dear friends, never avenge yourselves. Leave that to God. For it is written, I will take vengeance. I will repay those who deserve it, says the Lord. Instead, do what the scriptures say. If your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. And they will be ashamed of what they have done to you. Don't let evil get the best of you, but conquer evil with doing good. Friends, let's not, evil, let's not let evil get the best of us, but conquer evil with doing good. Just as Jesus commands his disciple, he continues to command each one of us today. If any of you want to become my followers, then deny yourselves and take up your cross and follow me. Amen.